Broadway is back. As performers get ready to return to the stage, a studio space in Times Square plays a key role. But before the curtain rises, rehearsals must begin, and it will take some scheduling choreography to make it all work. CBS News' Ali Bauman has more. The folks at New 42 Studios in Times Square like to say this is where the magic happens. Rehearsal is the best part. So we believe that that uh, is a true statement. Russell Granite, president and CEO at New 42 Studios, says the best sign Broadway is back on its feet is what's happening here on 42nd Street. Come mid-August, we are booked solid. And, and my guess is that's true for every rehearsal studio in the city, um, which is a challenge because you want to be able to accommodate everyone who calls. And if the protocols change, that means some of our studios could potentially be freed up. So we are booked based on the current protocols. If those change, then our space frees up. Um, but it is a sign that things are coming back. So as much as it's a challenge, we're trying to be as open and accommodating as possible. The good news there is that it's a sign that theater, dance, the arts are coming back. With 14 rehearsal studios, New 42 is where it all begins for many Broadway shows. Before they hit stages, performers are rehearsing here in the heart of Times Square. Some people come in with a fully realized idea for a show with a strong beginning, middle and end, perhaps even a cast uh, director already in place. And they're coming here really uh, to bring life to what's on uh, the paper. Mrs. Doubtfire is just one of the dozens of Broadway shows that rehearse in the new 42 studios each year before opening on Broadway. Other artists come here with an idea and it's a workshop. And so in the room, you could imagine you have artists, you have choreographers, you have dancers, you have dramaturgs all coming together with a, with a vision for something, but that vision isn't quite realized. So what they need is a space where they can be quiet, where they can feel safe, uh, to create work and end this idea of the building supporting that. Granite says performers and creators will need to be patient and safety plays a big role in the scheduling of rehearsal rooms. We will always err on the side of being more cautious. I hope for everyone's sake that there can be a little bit more freedom uh, to rehearse and enter the building. We have to, as an example, have to stagger you know, entrances and exits. We don't want everyone showing up at the same time or leaving at the same time. It, it is a challenge scheduling wise. And there's space to relax and take a break from the rigors of rehearsal. This is where oftentimes our artists have meals, they have breakfast, they have lunch, they have dinner. Uh, but it's closed temporarily, but I look forward to the time when it can be open and everyone can be together. There is nothing like being in a room full of living, breathing bodies. Jody Sperling is a dancer, choreographer, and founder of Time Lapse Dance. Like many artists, Sperling had to pivot during the pandemic. <laughs> Sperling didn't let the shutdown shut out her creativity. She stayed in step with the changing times and took her dance company to the streets of New York City. This piece is called Bunheads Back. And in the dance, Maki wears a mask on the back of her head. And it's inspired by Degas' sculpture, 14-year-old dancer. I think all of us feel it sometimes in our life, like we're a little bit different and we don't fit in. By time-lapse dance, we believe that dance can be a driver of social change. And I think that we have seen how much society needs to change over the past year. And so we're interested in deploying dance to create a more sustainable and a more equitable future. We have to continue to think about art as a means towards enriching our lives, but also building community and envisioning the kind of future that we want. Now back in the studio rehearsing, Sperling is ready for a reopening of the performing arts. To be in a studio is a special place for dance and it feels like coming home and rediscovering this whole part of yourself that I've been developing for decades. She says returning to the stage comes with some additional challenges. It's going to be a big adjustment for us to feel comfortable being in social proximity and sharing the same breath after um, you know, so much trauma over the past year. But I think it's also really important for us to become fully embodied and to continue to grow and to, frankly, to make the changes that we need to make as a society. In addition to providing rooms for rehearsal, New 42 has the New Victory Theater that's dedicated to producing shows for kids and families. The New Victory Theater and the arts education program that we have affiliated with it is the largest provider of performing arts to the New York City public schools. 
the arts start at a very young age. I mean, we know from our own research that if you're exposed to arts before the second grade, you are much more likely to be a theater goer, to exhibit empathy, you're much more likely to understand and imagine a better life. In Times Square, Ali Bauman, CBS 2 News.